Yeah, Bruce, it seems like there's just been a handful of games where your guys have uh, embraced, if you will, an inside-out philosophy. Does having the success they had on Saturday kind of reinforce that they can they can score with uh, driving to the hoop and getting baskets inside and then driving and kicking? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's, it's something we've, you know, tried to emphasize to them, you know, for the whole year. Um, you know, some of it is just, uh, you know, getting to know each other, the continuity of it. But, uh, and then, you know, we did a good job of, we had some post feeds, but we had a lot where we got in the paint um, and we were able to, you know, make the nice dish offs and the reads off of it. Um, and then actually got some transition uh, layups too, which we haven't, you know, we haven't got many of those in, in um, you know, in recent you know, the recent games. So it, you know, I, I hope, I hope it's something that they continue. Um, the, uh, you know, Oklahoma state game, our big guys were nine for 14. Uh, obviously the Kansas game, we just, we didn't get it in enough. And, and some of it's how people guard too. You, you know, that's uh, TCU guards one way. It's the unique and, uh, you know, challenging part of our league. Everyone guards a little different now can, uh, as a player and as a staff, can we get them to understand here's how we can attack them and here's what we can look for. And, you know, and, and that's the, the goal against Oklahoma. You know, that was yesterday what we watched was, you know, how we can, when we had success and when we've had success in the past and when other, what other teams have done this year, here's what we need to look for. Now go out, now can we go out and execute that? Can you reflect on the leadership that Mike McGrill has shown throughout the season? I think more than anything, the perseverance and, and you know, it, it's uh, you got to give him a lot of credit. Um, you know, I've talked about it. He was the first one to come back. He's, you know, he's wanted his senior year to be special. Obviously, it, we've had our struggles and, um, you know, but he's persevered and, you know, it's, it's gone a long way and, and he was rewarded with a, um, you know, after a really tough outing for him against Kansas and for all of us, um, you know, to come back and do that and, and you know, have a really, really, really positive game, uh, you know, 16, 9, 5, uh, you know, big passes, and, and he defended. You know, I know we all – Selton deserves a lot of credit. Our team deserves a lot of credit for our defense on, on what we did against TCU, holding them to the lows of the season. Um but uh, Mike did a nice job on Miles also. So, uh, it, so you know, he, good, complete game, persevered, uh, you know, happy for him. And, and, and hopefully, uh, you know, again, and I keep uh, – I text him right before the game, and I just said, relax, enjoy, and don't force the issue. Let the game come. And, and for the most part, he did that. So uh, it, hopefully he'll continue that as we got this last couple weeks of the season. And does Southern Miguel have the kind of repeatable uh, release that will produce good results in, uh, in perimeter shooting? Yeah, at Southern, if you look, he shot, I think, 42 last year from three. And obviously it's a little further back. Uh, the defense, the, 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 your time to get the shot off is different. Um, you know, you're going against better athletes that are better prepared. Uh, but um, – he, he can shoot the ball uh, and, and, you know, some of it's his footwork, some of it's being ready to shoot again, you know, that in, you know, high school, you, you're bigger, stronger, uh, you know, you're getting more open looks, your rhythm, your confidence. And now in college, you, it's, that's a, it's a split decision. You know, you got, you got less than a second. Am I shooting it? Am I ready to shoot? And uh, you know, he, you know, I, I still that that one corner he had the game winner what against uh, way back against Omaha and then he had a big one here the other night so he can do that I think the thing if you watch it now and I I was thinking about it the other night when he just catches and shoots it and I keep telling him he he's fine but when he I always say he fiddles with the ball he spins it he does you know he doesn't have his hands feet right all the time. Um, you know, that's when he, he doesn't have that rhythm. And he just caught that thing and shot it. There was no hesitation. Uh, but, I, you know, again, I think I've emphasized to him, I've emphasized all of them, have your mindset right, do what you do. And, uh, you know, he guarded the heck out of, a, you know, uh, out of a really good player for, 
you know, 30, whatever, 33 minutes. And then guess what happens at the end? He scores seven points down the stretch. And so good things happen if your mind's in the right spot. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, next question to Kellis Robinette. Hey, Bruce, with Oklahoma, uh, what's been the key to their defensive turnaround? I mean, we've always known they're good at offense. Seems like this year they're actually getting out and stopping people. What's different there? Well, I, you know, Lon, I've, I've been, you know, going against him a long time. Obviously, he's at the uh, K State and, uh, and then Illinois. We had a you know, chance to go against him. Uh, and even, I, I think we might even played him at Florida once. Uh, but, you know, he, he, way back, he was a real, I, I would say more deliberate, uh, you know, coach and defensive minded and they were tough and, and could, played a little, I guess, more conservative. And then it seems like at Oklahoma, uh, they've been a little more free flowing, a uh, lot of switching on defense. Uh, you know, I, I coach Mo, uh, Molinari joined the staff, obviously, uh, you know, was here at K-State and Lon's roommate and good friend for many years. And Mo's always been a, a tough, hard-nosed defen defensive coach. Um, I know I've talked to him about it. He's, he, I think he's, maybe instilled some of his uh, philosophies or brought his to, to, you know, change up a little bit. They, they are much tougher as a team. But there's, to me, it's also the, the, the guys in the program. And uh, the two additions, Harkless, I think has been, it's amazing how tough he is. And, and he's become their tough guy, their defender. Uh, Gibson has, has been, you know, not only can he shoot it, but he, seems to defend pretty well and then the big fella gives them a whole whole nother dynamic uh, with the you know defending the hoop so uh, they uh and they're they're guarding one-on-one -on -one pretty well too which is uh you know not an easy thing to do especially in this league it's the good guards but I think a little bit of combination of the personnel maybe a little change in philosophy and then definitely the toughness is is added uh added to their their good defense and defense has been your emphasis lately too at what point did you kind of notice the guys catching on and starting to, to get stops the way you liked well I can't I a couple of weeks ago um, gosh I can't remember which game it was but you know we we had kind of showed them some stuff from you know Dean and Barry's group and you know this is how you defend this is what you can do it might have been Texas Tech and um, you know, we, we did that, you know, we, I don't want to say we totally mimicked it, but we definitely, I think, seen how hard you have to play at the rotations, how you can't take plays off. Um, I think it, you know, to our coach's credit, I think Coach Lowry was the one that time thought about it and, and they kind of like bought in. So each game we've kind of been showing them, hey, here's what, you know, this is how we did it against, you know, each team. Um, and I think just seeing how how those guys play and that that intensity, uh, I, I think has helped. Maybe it has. Maybe it hasn't. You're always looking for things. Um, and then just now, just understanding it's experience, guys. I mean, you know, we didn't have we didn't you know defense is pride. It's habits. It's it's uh, and then it's you know concepts. And uh, we didn't have any much time for habits. And uh, we didn't have much, they, they've had to learn the concepts on the run. And, and, you know, over the course of the experience, they've gotten a little better with that. And now, you know, we, we kind of challenged Selton. Coach Southwell did a good job challenging uh, Selton and Mike to, you know, be stoppers for us. And it always helps when you have a couple guys, uh, you know, that take that challenge on. Uh, the other thing, our big guys are doing a better job in the ball screens getting to the line, understanding, uh, you know, where they got to go. I think, you know, now that Casey's had a few weeks under his belt um, and, and feels a little more confident about his leg, now you got, you know, probably a little better rotation. You can keep Davion a little more fresh, and that helps too in the ball screen defense because it's, it's, you know, you guys, everyone watches the guards, but a lot of times your defense is the other people. And especially in ball screens, those big guys can, they're really important, but probably get no credit for them. Yeah. 
And uh, last one for me, whenever it comes time for you and Mike to, to sit down and talk about, you know, whether he wants to come back for an extra year or year or not, what, what will that look like? What's the plan there? I mean, I've talked to him. He was the first person, I think I mentioned you guys, when I found out from the NCA, uh, I called him and his dad. Um, I've always felt awful, um, you know, that he, we pulled him out of red shirt, he, you know, and, and, you know, the circumstance where Cardi just all of a sudden really played well, and then Mike did get a lot of minutes, although he was really important in um, our run through the tournament. But I felt like he missed a lot of his freshman year. And I, I, I've told him, you know, uh, you know, I always say God has a path for you. And, and now you have this opportunity to get this freshman year back. Uh, you know, and, and so I, I hope you come back. Um, I talked to him the other day because uh, we are honoring him. Uh, the school has made a decision they, they did with football to honor all the seniors. Uh, you know, just in case guys decide something happens. So at least they are honored. And I said, uh, you know, we're honoring you not because, you know, we want you to leave because you deserve it. And, but, you know, we hope you can come back and we'll find another jersey to give you next year if that's, if that's possible. Wow. Two, two senior days. That'd be something. <laughs> Thanks, Bruce. Yep. Uh, next question to Ryan Black. Hey, uh, Bruce, can you hear me okay? I'm not in a great service area, unfortunately. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, uh, I was going to ask, with, with Selton specifically, is there any guy who you've had that he kind of reminds you of or, or compares him to? Or is there a guy you've told him, hey, this is who you should kind of model your game after? Or is he kind of his own unique guy? Well, he is his own unique guy, but uh... – I really, a lot of similarities to Barry. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons we got Selton here is because of, because of Barry. And, um, you know, we, Coach Fraser started going down the West Oaks. I started going down the West Oaks before when Selton was young, actually. And we, you know, we did some Florida recruiting. Um, uh, Kenny, uh, the coach there, who also coaches the AAU team, uh, you know, he knew Barry and his family. He, you know, loved Barry's progress, what he made, uh, you know, the progress he made here in the program. And, um, you know, so I, I, you know, that's, you know, part of the comparison, but obviously just a, a stubborn guy that, uh, you know, as a freshman, Barry was very stubborn. I told the story many times, you know, who's going to be our defensive stopper. Barry kept raising his hands and I kept telling him to put his hand down. I wanted, you know, but that, I think Selton has that same stubbornness. I wish he would have bought in a little earlier to being a stopper. We felt all along he's been a really good one-on-one -on -one defender. And, uh, but again, some of that's, you know, him learning and the concepts and that. And if you remember, Barry had his struggles offensively as a freshman. Um, and then he put his time into the, you know, in the gym that took him to obviously uh, possibly having his jersey put up in the rafters here at that type of level. So, uh, you know, we, I hope Sultan has that uh, same desire to, and stubbornness to really work at it and put the time in and improve his game like Barry did. But there's some similarity there. There's no doubt, but he is, he is unique. He's got that big strong body that uh, kind of I tease them all the time about it but uh, uh, you know stretching all those things things he never even thought of before are really important for him and his progress okay any other questions before I let coach go okay oh, thank you oh, guys oh. appreciate it. oh sorry yes yeah. Ryan Ryan, are you there? Oh, Ryan, yes. are you there? Okay. Can, yeah, okay. can you hear me, Tom? I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't know that it muted on me. I apologize. Um, I was going to ask uh, Bruce, if you're still there, just that uh, I know when he had the surgery, he said it was an outside shot, but is there any chance Monty comes back before the end of the season, or is he completely done? Uh, no, he's done. He um, actually uh, talked or communicated with him over the weekend. He has started therapy. Um, probably will be back here on campus that uh, uh, that first week of March. 
um, I think more that that weekend at the end of that and uh, uh, you know hopefully back to making some progress basketball why you know get back on the court and that they, uh, they did the surgery and then the first three weeks of therapy down there and now um, you know with school being basically all zoom for him uh, you know and now come then come back to campus for for that so Bruce, is there just any worry with him that, I mean, with two years in a row having this season-ending kind of surgeries that you just might have to deal with, with injuries with him his whole time here? Unfortunately? Well, I think that what he, the surgery has, hopefully will, uh, you know, get, you know, the whole goal was to get rid of the pain. And, uh, uh, you know, he had, the, you know, guys have patellar uh, tendon problems, the, the jumper's knee, you know, that he's not the first one. This is, um, you know, when – it's it's been there as far back as I can remember and you know there's more severe cases and uh, hopefully it's the right decision the right to surgery right surgery and uh, you know he can come back and be pain free and, and and make some progress last thing for me Bruce is uh, is your background a coincidence or is that a purposeful you know with the big 12 you know championship game that you guys won was against Oklahoma there a couple of years ago. Is that purposely done? No, I just – we have Zoom recruiting calls, so I just kind of rotate uh, depending on who we were talking to. And, um, you know, I just got different ones up there, and I just didn't get a chance to change this one, I think, so from last week. But it was right, a nice thank you, Bruce. and there's no doubt about that. Okay, we'll uh, do one last question to Grant Flanders. Hey, Coach, uh, when do you think uh, do you think Dejan Gordon will get inserted back into the starting lineup, or do you think you'll still have him come off the bench to finish up the year? Yeah, I, you know, Dejan, uh, you know, credit to him. He, I mean, he he came back and played against Kansas with two days of practice. Uh, we probably overdid the minutes. Uh, he still has a lot of soreness. Um, he hasn't, you know, he's, he's done a little bit of practice, more shooting, listening. Um, so it, it's tough. I mean, it's really tough right now, uh, but we do need him. And I, and I really appreciate, I mean, he's, he's been gutsy, uh, shown some toughness, um, uh, you know, to, to even play. Cause there's, there's some guys that wouldn't have played, uh, you know, so, um, you know, again, I, I, I appreciate him and, and what he's, you know, that he's been able to, you know, want to be part of it and help us. I mean, even the other day, uh, you know, two big free throws, uh, he has six on the play hard chart. Uh, you know, he, he, every, that was a team win. There were some guys that stood out, but Luke, even Luke comes in, Luke has four on the play hard and a handful of men, it takes the ball off Nimhart and, you know, so that Carlton goes in a few minutes. So we need, if we're going to have success, we need everybody uh, playing their role. And, um, you know, I, I, I feel for days one because two injuries during the year, uh, you know, and this one was definitely a little more, uh, a little more tragic than the, the first one. And uh, so you've had both feet issues, but he still, you know, he wants to play. I put him in. I said, well, we'll run the lot. Are you ready to go for a dunk? And, he said, I'm ready, coach. So, you know, he that's just him. He just he's got that that toughness and he wants to get after it. And um just hope it he can get some of the soreness out here. We got to be careful in practice. And then just so he can have he can have some good minutes in these games down the stretch. Uh are you worried that Antonio is, you know, it play it, it seemed like it came out like his coming out party happened with Dejuan out of the out of the lineup, but now that he's back, uh, he, he did a good job of not shooting too much. But what does Antonio have to do to still be a good contributor with Dejuan still in the lineup? Well, I think it, you, you have guys that everyone plays their role. And, you know, I, I, you know, there's every – and, again, every team's different that we play. The opponents, they guard differently. Some help off the floor, some uh, – but he's just got – his thing has been – he's been successful. I, I – I told our guys after he had 15 and 14 in that Oklahoma State game, when we arrived back, I said, he did that without one play being run to. Him. And that's, you know, a lot of times our guy, you know, I, you don't run a play for me, coach. Well, you are there. It's part of it. 
when you're in a ball screen, it's not for you. It's it's for everyone else. And now everyone's got to play off of that. And Tone's really picked up that niche, uh, you know, and you guys mentioned that he talked about Rodman, you know, figuring, figuring that out and being successful. Not, uh, you know, I shot with him yesterday for 40 minutes and, uh, you know, he, he, you know, he want, we all want to make shots and, you know, hopefully he can find ways to get some openings, but, if he keeps doing all that other stuff, uh, he can be a really valuable member for a team. Plus, he, you know, if, I think what I mentioned the big guys both played about 20 the other day, gave us a little bit of freshness. You know, it, you know, if we can keep guys around 32 or so, I think it always helps, especially in the defense as you get into the stretch run of the game, that, uh, you know, we're, we're able to get some stops in close games.